Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at I Love Pathology. Today's topic is the third part of atherosclerosis. In the first part, we had discussed the risk factors associated with atherosclerosis. In the second part, I had discussed in detail about the pathogenesis of uh, atherosclerosis and the steps in the atheroma formation. Okay. In this part, we will be discussing in detail about the morphology and consequences of atherosclerosis. While understanding the uh, steps in the formation of atheroma, we uh, know that the first lesion is fatty streaks, right? So fatty streaks are composed primarily of lipid-filled foamy macrophages. These are small, flat, yellow macules, okay? And over a period of time, they coils to form elongated streaks of one centimeter or even longer. Can you make out that this is an elongated streak of one such fatty streak okay they can they can be you know they are so subtle that they might not be visible uh, at times you know only when they coils to form the larger the longer uh, lesions they will be visible the only uh, good thing about fatty streak is that there will be no flow disturbance because they're just macules they're just tiny uh, lesion they will not have any luminal compromise they won't they will not cause any obstruction so no flow of disturbance but ultimately they can evolve into plagues what are these plaques? These are atherosclerotic plaques. Now, what are the atherosclerotic plaques? You call it as a plaque whenever there is an intimal thickening and because of fat accumulation. Okay, They are yellow tan lesions. They are raised lesions. They can vary in size. Can you make out? This is a section of abdominal aorta. You can easily make out that there are various yellowish or yellowish white lesions throughout the wall of abdominal aorta okay in the tunica intima these are raised lesions and you can easily make out that each of these are uh, you know variable in size right so they enlarge over a period of time and can become numerous the vessels involved in the descending order of frequency are the lower abdominal aorta and iliac arteries. Next common is a coronary blood vessel, then popliteal, internal carotid artery and the vessels of circle of villis. Now that's a higher magnification view of the same blood vessel. You can easily make out that these are yellowish white, yellowish tan, raised lesions throughout the blood vessel. Look at this. Can you make out that these are all of variable sizes? Some are small, some have coils to form larger masses. Okay. So these are the atherosclerotic plaques. Now atherosclerotic plaque, histologically, they have four components. What are those four components? They contain cells. The cells could be smooth muscle cells. They can be macrophages and T lymphocytes. The second component is the most important one is the extracellular matrix, which is predominantly made up of collagen, elastic fibers and proteoglycans. The third component is the lipids, that is the core of the atherosclerotic plaque. The lipid can be within the cell uh, as in the form of foam cells as we had said earlier, right? They can be intracellular and extracellular lipid deposition or in between the cells. The last one is calcification, not seen in all the lesions, but then can be seen in lesions at later stages. Okay, this is a dystrophic type of calcification. Now, varying proportions and configurations in different lesions. When I say this, this means the cells, the extracellular matrix and lipids can be in variable proportions. In few atherosclerotic plaques, the matrix can be more. In few plaques, the lipid component can be more. In few uh, plaques, the cellular component can be more. Now, this is an illustrated image just depicting the structure of atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, you have a fibrin cap that is essentially made up of collagen. That's an extracellular matrix component. Okay, then you have a necrotic core which is composed of fat and cholesterol. And this part of the plaque, you know, that is called shoulder, where you find lots of inflammatory cells, the macrophages, T lymphocytes, and smooth muscle cells. Okay, so this, this is the shoulder part of the atherosclerotic plaque. The necrotic core not only contain lipid, they also contain debris from dead cells. They contain foam cells, fibrin, thrombus and other plasma proteins. Okay, So this is essentially the components of an atherosclerotic plaque. The cells are these things, right? The fibrin cap 
is a extracellular matrix component the necrotic cord is a lipid component right so three major components of atherosclerotic plate the cells the matrix the lipids and the fourth one is the calcification which you can see in a later stage lesions let me explain this in a virtual slide so this is an athero this is a blood vessel which has an atheroma or atheromatous plaque okay now at this magnification you can make out that there is some amount of luminal compromise you know luminal obstruction the lumen has narrowed so this should have been the lumen but then because of this plaque deposition here so there is a narrowing of lumen okay now let me zoom in to a higher magnification which can easily you can make out the components of atherosclerotic plaque what are the components we talked about cellular components right so all those blue dots what you are seeing they are all the cellular component could be macrophages lymphocytes and the nuclei of smooth muscle cells and now the extracellular matrix component so this component the pink structure what you are seeing which covers atheromatous plaque it's a fibrin cap so this is essentially made up of collagen the collagenous material forms an extracellular matrix component which is nothing but a fibrous cap now the core component or the lipid component is what you are seeing here so this entire thing is a lipid component which is made up of cholesterol crystals so okay look at this these are all cholesterol crystals essentially during the processing you know the the lipid component gets dissolved and then you find these empty spaces so these are referred to as cholesterol crystals so this part of the atheromatous plaque constitutes the shoulder where the cells will be more uh, predominant in this part so this is a central necrotic core cap extracellular matrix component okay these are the cholesterol crystals these are the inflammatory cells what you are seeing here all those blue dots they are nuclei of lymphocytes histiocytes then this pink structure is a matrix predominantly made up of collagen so this is the histological feature of an atherosclerotic plaque now having understood the histology of atherosclerotic plaque let us see what changes can occur in an atheromatous plaque okay the changes can be in the form of erosion a plaque may have erosion they can ulcerate or even rupture the plaque can undergo hemorrhage and then it undergoes atheroembolism or it can be aneurysm these are the changes which you can expect in an atheromatous plaque changes within the atheromatous plaque and these are because of those changes you can expect some other complications now what are these changes one you said athero erosion or ulceration which can predispose to the development of thrombosis which result in either partial or complete occlusion of the blood vessel hemorrhage can occur within the plaque because of rupture there will be some amount of neovascularization at the shoulder level of the atheromatous plaque okay because of some amount of hemodynamic disturbances because of some pressure disturbances there might be rupture of these capillaries leading to hemorrhage into the atheromatous plaque now once there is a ruptured atheromatous plaque okay so the atheroma can embolize so embolize and then that result in the formation of atheroembolism and lastly aneurysm can occur aneurysm of the blood vessel can occur because of ischemic atrophy of the underlying tunica media we did study about this in the last tutorial right there may be increased diffusion gradient that might result in you know less nutrition supply to the tunica media and also it can cause ischemic atrophy by pressure of the underlying tunica media both these result in weakening of the muscles of tunica media and that can result in aneurysm so this is one of the complication which you can expect in an in, in, in an atheromatous plaque now what are the consequences apart from those what we studied the most important consequences are the myocardial infarction the cerebral infarction and the peripheral vascular disease particularly gangrene so the myocardial and the cerebral infarctions are the most important causes of mortality as a complication of atheromatous plaques whereas the peripheral vascular disease can result in predominantly morbidity so let us see what happens and how these things can happen what are the events which triggers occlusion of a blood vessel by these atheromas Okay, so this is an illustrated image showing a blood vessel. This is a tunica intima, that's tunica media, and lastly tunica adventitia. So that's a normal blood vessel, right? So initial stage, that's a fatty streak. 
Beyond fatty streak is an intimal thickening. There is a mild intimal thickening, early form of atheromatous plague this is. And next one, you know, as the atheromatous plague expands, initially what happens, you know, the blood vessels tries to compensate the luminal, the luminal diameter tries to be, tries to maintain by expansion, eccentric expansion of the vessel wall. Okay, but then later as the plague expands, that will not happen and then the lumen will be compromised. So there will be narrowing of the inner diameter of the blood vessel because of extensive deposition of atheromatous plague components. Okay, now what are the consequences? What, what are the causes for all those consequences I told you? The consequences like, you know, infarction, myocardial infarction, or cerebral infarction, whatever, that's because of obstruction, right? Now, what are the causes of, for the consequences? The most important cause being atherosclerotic stenosis. An important one is acute plague change. The first one is atherosclerotic stenosis. The stenosis has to be critical for it to cause an occlusion which is sufficiently severe to cause tissue ischemia. What is this critical stenosis? You call critical stenosis when there is 70 to 75% of obstruction. So this is a critical stenosis. This, this should have been the normal in a luminal diameter. Look at this because of a complicated atheromatous plague where there is a calcification also. That's that blue thing what you're seeing is a calcified material. So this is a fibrocalcified plague which has resulted in critical stenosis that will severely compromise the nutrition of a given uh, tissue which with, with the second one is acute plague change so it can be because of rupture or due to fissure of the plague like for if, if there is a rupture you can easily make out that the rupture can lead to hemorrhage and the whole uh, lumen will be filled with blood so that can cause sudden obstruction or it can lead to the formation of thrombosis this thrombosis can be either which can result in either partial or complete occlusion of the blood vessel that's an acute thrombus right or acute plague change can be hemorrhage i told you this is the same thing okay because of rupture there can be hemorrhage and the hemorrhage can be within the plague this is intra plague hemorrhage and the hemorrhage can rupture out of the plague and then cause luminal obstruction the third one is erosion or ulceration. Again, there may be mild erosion on the surface of the plague. And because of erosion, the platelets tend to get adhered. The endothelial, there is already injury uh, has happened that might lead to the development of thrombosis. The thrombosis initially is quite small, then becomes big, and then it can completely occlude. So all these are basically sudden events, okay? Sudden events in a plague which can result in catastrophic consequences now let us see why exactly rupture can happen okay the plague ruptures means these plagues are unable to withstand the mechanical stresses which are generated by vascular shear forces now what are the trigger factors for the plague to be ruptured the trigger factors can be classified into two things one it could be intrinsic factor and two extrinsic factor when i say intrinsic factor it means the plague structure and composition is such that they can get ruptured easily. To the extrinsic factors, it can be because of blood pressure, because of platelet reactivity and even vessel spasm can lead to rupture or fissure. Now coming back to the intrinsic factors, we need to understand that the integrity of cap, which is made up of collagen, right? So the integrity of cap depends upon the balance between collagen synthesis and collagen degradation. We understood that during the process of atheroma, atheromatous plague formation, the cells, the factors derived from those cells, you know, they help in the production of extracellular matrix, particularly collagen. The collagen can also degrade. When the collagen can degrade, that's because whenever there is more inflammation, the inflammation, if it is more, that itself can result in degradation of collagen and inflammation can also reduce collagen synthesis. So presence of inflammation in an atherosclerotic plate is not a good sign. Okay, so cap integrity is very important. The balance between collagen synthesis and collagen degradation tells you whether this plaque will go in for rupture or not. And those plaques which has inflammation, which has reduced or a thin fibrin cap, and these are more prone for rupture and they are referred to as unstable or vulnerable plaques. Now, what are the extrinsic factors? Extrinsic factors can be because of adrenergic stimulation. It could be because of intense emotional stress, which can result in increased blood pressure or can induce 
intense vasoconstriction now what happens when there is vasoconstriction so whenever there is vasoconstriction that itself compromises the lumen size and once the lumen size is compromised that leads to increase in the local mechanical forces which leads to plaque disruption what are the stimulation for vasoconstriction at atheroma slide that's also very important the stimulation can be circulating adrenergic agonists the stimulation can be because of the platelet contents which are released locally it can be because of endothelial cell dysfunction as well or from the mediators from perivascular inflammatory cells all these things can cause vasoconstriction at the atheroma site and because of vasoconstriction that can result in plaque disruption and because of plaque disruption it can result in the development of thrombus or hemorrhage leading to partial or complete obstruction and thereby consequent let us understand two important concepts what is a stable plaque and what is a vulnerable plaque so the differences between the stable and the vulnerable plaque is the stable plaque has a dense fibrous cap okay look at this this has a dense fibrous cap in contrast to an unstable or vulnerable plaque which has a very thin fibrous cap that's the reason why they are more prone for the plaque rupture or plaque ulceration the second one is the stable plaque will have minimal lipid accumulation whereas unstable plaque will have large lipid accumulation the third one is stable plaque will have very little or absolutely no inflammation whereas unstable plaque will have dense inflammation okay and we know that inflammation can itself cause decrease or degradation of extracellular matrix and as well it also reduces collagen synthesis so, so that results in so thinning of the fibrous cap thereby causing it to be more prone for plaque rupture now let us i mean summarize you have a thin cap you have a thick cap you have fibrotic plaque these two are relatively safer atheromatous plaques they don't cause much complication unless and until the plaque grows and then causes critical stenosis now what does thin cap do thin cap can result in plaque erosion because of all those factors we just discussed this plaque erosion can lead to throm thrombus formation which can result in partial or complete occlusion and it can also result in fibroclastic calcified plaque which results in critical stenosis so by now you have understood that atheromatous plaque can cause catastrophic consequences by means of these two important things one the critical stenosis and two acute plaque events right see the acute plaque events can be in the form of rupture hemorrhage or ulceration ultimately all these things you know leads to the formation of acute thrombo thrombotic event leading to either partial or complete obstruction and thereby compromising the blood supply to a tissue with these blood vessel supply resulting in all those catastrophic consequences in the form of myocardial infarction if this involves a coronary blood vessels cerebral uh, infarction or stroke if it involves a cerebral blood vessels and the gangrene if it involves the peripheral blood vessels and these are sudden events so with this i conclude part 3 of atherosclerosis and the entire topic on atherosclerosis in these three parts thank you don't forget to share this video if you find this useful do comment if you have any uh, queries and please subscribe this channel because i'll be coming out with more and more videos shortly thank you